daily we are bombarded by thousands of images on TV on the internet from the news we watch to the sermons we even hear to the people that we meet on a daily basis our affections our attitudes our moods our beliefs and our actions are swayed and cemented and interpreted by the voices that we listen to yet in all of this there is no voice that is as influential as the voice of your life no voice is as influential in all a person's life as their own voice what you tell yourself based on what you believe is so powerful that it influences your life the truth is no one is more influential in your life than you are because no one talks to you more than you do we never stop talking to ourselves have you noticed that every time we keep talking to ourselves this the things you say to you about you and about god and about life are profoundly Im more important than anything else anybody says because these things that you say to yourself they form and shape the way that you respond to the things that god has put on you god has put a lot of things on our plates but how you see it and how you interpret it determines whether it benefits you or it's a disadvantage to you praise god it is true whether we realize it or not that we are in constant communication with ourselves we are cementing internally everything that we encounter praise god we are dictating the narratives the narratives that we believe based on our interpretation of the world around us now the way i interpret something may be different from the way you interpret it and so the message that comes to you will be different from the message that comes to me two people can be in the same environment different the same thing will be happening to them but they will be getting different interpretations based on how they interpret it to themselves and that's why images are powerful praise god can you look at this pulpit stand right now how many straight lines down can you see let's take a look praise god how many can you see eh? let me have your attention how many can you see demola how many can you see father son Brother Ima, how many can you see? Zakia, uh, how many can you see from there? Straight lines down, from top to bottom. Can you see this simple thing? We are seeing different things. Can you see that? Pastor Jerry, how many can you see? Three. Now, I'm not going to tell you how many is here until after the service. But can you see now that from this just this, this simple stand here, we are seeing different things. We are seeing different things. But let me even give you the answer. There is no single line from top to bottom. Not one. There is no single line from top to bottom. The one that starts from here ends here. This one starts from here ends here. I said from top to bottom, not one. But we are seeing seven. We are seeing three. We are seeing six. And you, what you are seeing is based on what you believe. And you have interpreted in your mind. 
and that's why on the issues of life we are seeing so many wrong things and interpreting it and believing it and working with it and we say things are not working but we have not seen correctly we are interpreting things to ourselves based on our wrong beliefs and wrong perceptions what people have told us the images we have seen what the world has sold to us what culture have sold to us what the situation in nigeria is telling us and then we are interpreting our lives and the things happening to us based upon the wrong beliefs but if you get the right beliefs and you interpret it rightly then you will get the right results If we keep interpreting things based on how we see it on the basis of our uneducated mind of the right things because if our minds are not educated with the right perception of things and we interpret things and believe concepts on that basis we are treading on dangerous grounds have i lost you this morning And talking to yourself and not listening to yourself is not about self-talk that psychologists would want you to do. This is not a call to speak affirmations in the mirror or boost your self-esteem like speaking to yourself what you want to see and all of that. It's a call to be careful how you think. Because thoughts have consequences as human beings our hearts are naturally deceptive and our innermost desires are infected with sin let's look at Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 19 quickly our hearts are naturally deceptive Even though God has saved us, we see wrestle with the flesh. That means sometimes we are tempted to preach the wrong sermons to ourselves. The false gospel. We preach the false gospel to ourselves and believe lies that we hear. Jeremiah 17, 19. Verse 9, rather. 17, verse 9. The heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful. A puzzle that no one can figure out. NIV. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. No. Who can understand it? So if you depend on your own natural inclination and the way you see things, you will be on the wrong constantly. Let me give you an example of fear. You know, because of certain things that you have seen happen to different people over time because certain things happen to them. If the same thing begins to happen to you, what will your heart tell you? Consider the results that the other person got. How the person did not survive it. How are you sure you can survive it? Maybe in a particular family, people don't cross the age of 40 and it has happened constantly and then when the person reaches 35 he says okay we are close to it it is our lot that's the heart that is deceitful using images of wrong that has happened to play a trick on you i'll give you an example in my family i don't think i've told a lot of people about this my mom died at the age of 57 now before she died six years earlier their last born died three months late three years later the one that is second to the last died then exactly three months six months six three years later so every three years they were dying from the youngest to the eldest so when my mom passed, our elders in the family, that's my mom's elder sister, told
told us that it's her turn in three years. So that's when it dawned on us that, ah, ah, six years ago, Sister Rose. Three years ago, Sister Janet. Now, my mom. So three years later should be Sister Agnes. That's when all of us said, no, I think we found it too late. There is enough. So we began to pray. And we changed the narrative in our heart. And we worked on our own to change the narrative in our heart. My mom died 12 years ago. That woman is here alive. My aunt. She has gone through several things that will knock her out. The enemy tried to play a lot of tricks. Listen to this. She was on her way from the farm riding a bicycle. You know, of course, it's a means of transport. Elderly people ride bicycles in the village. All right? Just riding a bicycle and fell by herself and fainted. How possible is that? There was no vehicle that hit her. And, you know, thank God for a priest in that village. Because she shared this thing with the priest. And we had talked somehow with, you know, my cousins. So that they, they went to talk to the priest. So that particular three years after her younger sister died, there were many attempts for her to go. But you know, we are now aware. That's the power of knowledge. When you have knowledge, you can stop the works of darkness. So one of the things that she kept doing is that when it, when she starts feeling very sick and it's, the, the, the thoughts fill her heart that, okay, it's time to go, it's time to go. She will just pack her things and go and stay in the mission house. And the priest, she will be staying around where they are always praying. She will just lie down there. Sometimes she will stay there for a week. They will bring her food there. Everything. She say, if the devil wants to take her life, let her come and pass. Through. Let the devil come and pass through the Reverend Father. If he can pass through the mission house and get to the Reverend Father's quarters, then she is ready to go. And be because what you believe works for you, anytime she gets to the mission house, all the symptoms will go. But when she comes back to the house, after a day or two, fear will just fill her and the symptoms will come back. Some of the symptoms that we have, of the sicknesses that come around, they may not be diseases, basically. Some of them are heart issues. Mind challenges. When you are really afraid, what you are afraid of will just be approaching you. Job said, what I was afraid happened to me. So, don't allow yourself to preach false sermons positive self-talk that discounts reality is not going to help us you are sick i am not sick i'm not sick god you know good you are not sick you are sick the truth will overshadow that fact but don't deny reality truthful self-talk is what will help us and where is a truthful self-talk from the scriptures that's what it means to keep our hearts with all diligence we buffer our hearts with the truth we fill our hearts with the truth. we ground it we root it and mold it with truth soak your thoughts in scriptures and surround yourself with honest voices and that's why it's important to have people around you who affirm you, who believe in the word of God. Not people who tell you that uh, things will not work. Oh, that there are a lot of people who are giving up on Nigeria completely. Especially after yesterday's <laughs> primary. But my faith is, is, is even heightened. You know why? Change does not happen dramatically. Change happens in a process. And sometimes God uses known figures to cause change. The, most, the least likely. God says, I will not drive out the enemies from the land at once. I will drive them out bit by bit. 
Because if I drive them out all at once, you won't have the number.